Welcome back to Rocky Rabbit Commentaries Plays. Oh my goodness, what are we doing with our lives? This is Monopoly on the Xbox 360, the no! classic board game. No! Oh yes. It's a, it's a, uh, <clears throat> a game that needs no introduction, which is why I do not put an introduction on this part. This is the uh, Parker. This is the Parker Brothers' 1930s classic, not quite true to the original design of the game, brought to life in Xbox 360 format with a um, music backtrack and um, ahem, ahem, <clears throat> voice acting. No, really, Irving. Yes, I am currently designating names for my AI opponents. For this exposition of Monopoly, going to the classic board setting that uses all of the widely recognizable names of the properties and the deeds you find around the board, I, it's me against three AI opponents, and uh, all, these opponents, all these opponents are set to minimum difficulty. All right, so for those of you that are wondering why the hell Gerdet uh, was screaming no at the start of the part, it's because Gerdet absolutely fucking hates this board game. This board game is fucking ass. <laughs> Nobody wins in Monopoly, for the record. Everyone just collectively decides to stop playing at some point when it's very clear that the winner was decided 20 turns ago. Well, you know what, else? You know what other games are like that? Ch chess? No, chess. Starcraft? No, here's the thing. Chess? Pokemon? <laughs> chess decides the game. Uh, chess decides the game within within the first 20 turns, but it's uh, if you're playing with someone on, on equal skill, it's relatively difficult to actually ascertain if uh, if they've already won by the uh, by the time that it, that, that is actually um, uh, uh, taken place. Pokemon actually, uh, Pokemon does actually have that problem where you know. Uh, competitive Pokemon specifically has that problem where specific strategies do win on turn one, and they just have to actually execute the rest of the strategy near perfectly for it to, uh, for it to, for them to get to the uh, victory screen. But you know those games don't Let's last seven happens. fucking hours. A game of Monopoly, uh, if you're playing the, the the actual board game, lasts up to two hours, and unfortunately the the player that's winning has no has no need to concede because he's just winning that uh, by that goddamn much. Now, there here's, are... here's an interesting piece. <laughs> We're actually getting to see the auction phase. For those of you that have played Monopoly at home, you probably skipped the auction phase. Yeah, they made uh, they made auctioning an option in the case that... I guess it's a rule in Monopoly that had eluded me growing up that when you land on a property, of course, by rolling your two six-sided dies and moving your space equal the number of... moving your piece a number of spaces equal to the result of your dice roll, you must take an action on an unowned property that you land on. You can't say, no, I'm not buying it. That property must go to a player. So yep. if you decide to pass on purchasing it, especially in the computer-driven game, you are going to auction it. And this is where it kicks in that I had set the computer AI to minimum difficulty because the computer AI on minimum difficulty is highly exploitable when you're using the auction system. Minimum AI opponents will not bid the sticker price on properties. So as long as your bet is does not match or exceed the price, then you get a bargain on every single property you auction off. Nice. Yes, it that helped means, me. Um, it means that human players can actually win this game for fucking once. It's up to you. Buy yeah. So what am I doing? I am immediately auctioning off Let's the property because I happen to know that I can get St. James Place for a hundred and sixty dollars, especially because when you're bidding price in the in the computer game, when you're bidding prices between one hundred and two hundred dollars, the the marginal increase in bid goes up by $20, which means that a computer would have to bid the sticker price in order to beat my bid, right? which they will not do. It takes a little practice. Um, so, some, of these, some of these properties get a little tricky, especially when you're bidding for properties between uh, $200 and $300 in price, because then the marginal bid goes up by $25.
Time to pay the rent. <laughs> and already, already we're seeing a small, uh, very small amounts of uh, currency exchange. I'm kind of surprised that they actually start you off with fifteen hundred dollars. That seems like really high amount. Well, you've always started with fifteen hundred dollars in Monopoly. Really, I could have sworn that uh, at least at home we ended up starting with about uh, we ended up starting with about two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars? But you can't buy anything with two hundred dollars. Well, maybe it was a smaller scale version of Monopoly that we had uh, uh, at home. I'm not entirely sure. Well, you certainly can't auction off properties if nobody has any fucking money. <laughs> well, two hundred dollars is that, is actually plenty of money to actually start doing auctions. It it makes the first several properties signi uh, significantly uh, more important, but then they have to actually pay out. And the th yeah, uh, and the thing is, uh, uh, then it becomes a matter of who actually goes first, and uh, not only who goes first, but who goes uh, first and farthest. For, first and farthest is the key to mastering the game of Monopoly. The more properties you rack up early, the higher your probability of ultimately winning the game. Going once. Because buying properties has a twofold effect. Not only can you proceed to collect rent from players who land on your purchase property, you also deny those players a chance at buying the property themselves. Right. Mm, and that's so, where trading comes in. So doubles allows you to roll again. Um, yep. What do you say? Buy Auction it, of course. I can get this for two hundred and seventy-five dollars. It's a steal. Uh, I. The thing is, they don't actually have a timer on screen for this, which is kind of weird. Not an on-screen timer. Um, there, uh, there is an interaction timer for the record, but. Uh, uh, <laughs> So just watch Mr. Monopoly. He he will let you know when you're out of time to bid. There we go. Going twice. Sold to the highest bidder. Ah. This actually does have quite a bit more uh, production values than I, than I was expecting it. It feels it feels <laughs> much more like a uh, like a fully fleshed out PS2 pool game though, as opposed to you know a, a slapdash Monopoly title. I mean, honestly, PS2 would not have so many fine details on Mr. Monopoly himself, especially when you zoom out his character model. Hmm. It's kind of weird that they actually have a dedicated shadow for him, and... <laughs> I'm, well, it's not I'm like they trying, have to animate all that to, much. I'm trying to figure out if that is, in fact, a set light fixture. Because it definitely it, it is, is. It's supposed to be, but if you if you check out the shadow, yeah, his, his shadow moves around with the board. I uh huh, and the pieces have shadows too, well and the dies. Oh my god, the AI is trading. What are these idiots up to? <laughs> oh, hey, hey, I landed on boardwalk. Oh, I love landing on Boardwalk. You so say? you can buy Boardwalk yeah. for three seventy-five, right? That is correct. Yes. Could be so, for those of us following along, so far I have saved about one hundred dollars or more just by exploiting the AI through the auction system. This will keep you with a relatively well-stocked wallet while you also rack up properties in your portfolio. Okay, so because I've never actually gotten to the end of uh, uh, the actual end of a game of Monopoly, I'm gonna have to ask, <laughs> what is the actual win con? The win con is a player must land on a property uh, that is owned by another player and then proceed to owe them money that is greater than their total assets, their cash, and okay, also that's the mortgage value. How do you win? No, that that's just it. You have you have to bank you have to bankrupt every other player on the board. Why isn't there uh, alternate win con win condition um, in in Monopoly? Uh, the ultimate the oh, I mean, surely you are familiar with fuck this game. I'm not playing anymore. That also is an alternate win con. Never seen anything like it. Really, you decided you decided to get a full Monopoly. I'm amazed. The, uh, I'm amazed the computer even on easy would allow you to do that, huh? 
The computer on easy mode not only is exploitable through the auction system, it also is exploitable through trading. As long as you're trading an equal number of properties, that is the main metric by which the computer determines yes or no on the trade deal. So okay. I throw some cash in in case there's a discrepancy between the ca the the mortgage values of deeds that I'm trading to him. For example, if I'm trying to get properties that are more valuable than the properties... I'm sorry, that if I'm trying to trade for properties that are less value than what I'm getting in return, then I'll throw some cash in. Usually, and honestly, you don't even have to do that on easy mode. Sometimes they'll just fucking take it. Okay, so Irving's got two of the railroads now, right? Uh, Irving has three of the railroads, actually. Holy you can shit, tell because of you can tell because of the color-coded and shape-coded stamps that are attached to the board when it zooms out, so you can see the entire Monopoly board. All right. So that means that every time somebody lands on Reading or Reading, I, I guess it's called Reading Railroad. Yeah, it's Reading Railroad. Reading Railroad, B and O Railroad, and Short Line. That player owes Irving one hundred dollars. What's going to happen here? Well, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna fucking take the property for 90 bucks. <laughs> I hear a new bid. Or at least I think I do. Damn. All right, now somebody else bid. There. Okay, new yeah, bid. and I steal it. Mm. Going once. A 500. Okay, Going so if I recall correctly, in order to actually get up to a full, a full uh, suite of hotels. On uh, on a property, you do have to go well through done. all of the uh, all the different unit upgrades for uh, for it first, right? The 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 hotel predicating on you having purchased four houses on it already. Yes, so that yeah. would be that would be the upgrades. The deeds are in your name. Uh oh! Now the computer's to offering for me a deal. Place. You see that that yeah that, that take take the money eight eight hundred dollars is a stupid amount of money to trade somebody so honestly Bartleby probably just secured my win it doesn't doesn't even enter into it that he has a monopoly on Boardwalk and Park Place he can't afford houses not only can he not <laughs> afford houses with twelve dollars he's a he, he's a he's explicitly in a very high risk scenario where if he lands on anything that he doesn't own he's almost dead. Like I think the only uh, 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 places that he can land uh, that he doesn't immediately uh, doesn't immediately almost die is Baltic and uh, the other uh, uh, light blue. Well, let's see. Oh yeah. Also, take note that Bartleby only co he controls only those two properties, which means that those are his only assets. At most, he has. Three hundred and eighty-seven dollars in assets, which means that if he had to pay rent of four hundred dollars or more, he's dead. And he all and as a result of getting bankrupted by an exorbitant rent fee, he has to relinquish all properties and cash assets to the player to whom he owes rent. Going once. And so does he actually and land on Virginia Avenue? Sold to the highest bid. That is a good question. The deeds are in your name now. Oh yes, oh, the sticker book system. See, in Board Game Monopoly, you're not trying to fill a passport full of stickers, but in Computer Monopoly, this game wants you to, by an excruciating process, unlock each of the boards in the game by individually landing on each property and purchasing it, not well, including auction options. You cannot trade for properties in order to get stickers. You must be the, the original purchaser. Mm, so, Comchest, right? No, St. James, all right. It's not quite time to start buying prop to start buying houses on my monopoly on the three oranges. We're still at the stage where, because of my stupidly high wallet, that I can just continue to buy properties. Okay, seven. So a typical game of Monopoly on the computer game lasts about 45 minutes, 45 to 60 minutes. Okay. Which is why in the next part we are going to continue to expound on the classic board given this situation which is largely in favor of the human playing. Mm, I still fucking hate this game. A lot of people hate this game. 
Mr. Gerdet. And we hope you all can appreciate computer-driven Monopoly instead. Be safe, everybody.